Time Glick with Jiminy's special guests, Rob Schneider. And it's Rob Schneider in love. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious, we got another scoop. Do we know his name? <laughs> and Tim Robbins. I lost my virginity to that song. That's amazing. It's true, it really is. In a car? No, I was riding a bicycle. No kidding. I'm Adrian Van Voorhees, and am I the only one who needs a Glick fix? No, Damn straight. Ladies and gentlemen, Jiminy Glick. yourselves on account of you're so kind. You're so kind. And where's our own Miss Gathercole who's never missed a show? Oh, there you are, dear. Hello. Move over. Drop dead. Oh, listen to them. They love me. They're completely enameled of you. <laughs> I haven't felt such a surge of warmth since the night Dixie forgot to wear her adult diaper and shorted out the electric blanket. <laughs> I hadn't read that one yet. Ah, oh, but you see, that is the kind of humor that is so on the edge. But here's the deal. That joke was written by our new Jewish writer. Isn't he the one we stole it from Craig Kilburn, Adrian? Yes, I believe so, and shame on us. <laughs> <laughs> but the simple truth is, Adrian, that when one is doing a comedy show, one simply must have Jewish persons on one's writing staff, or the hard laughs just won't be there. <laughs> well, I mean, you get the little Gentile titters, which are okay, I mean, I suppose. But for me, I love big titters. <laughs> the bigger the titters, the better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Adrian. I did a lot of big thinking over the weekend, and I've decided to switch. Don't tell me you're pulling a rosy on it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Religions, dear. I'm switching religions. Ah. I don't know. Lately, Buddhism just isn't floating my boot. Well, have you decided on your new spiritual path? Being a Mormon, I don't know. It could be a hoot, but I think Dixie would have a problem with me popping other wives. You know, she's <laughs> like that. And I couldn't stand being a Muslim because they just don't seem to give a Shiite. <laughs> Have you thought about atheism? I mean, that would certainly simplify things. Well, it's funny you should say that because of all the options out there, I find atheism the most intriguing. <laughs> and if that ain't a song cue, I don't know what is. Two, three. No more praying. You get the damn what the good book says. Tired of thinking about the afterlife. I'd rather covet my neighbor's wife. Atheism. Any jelly donuts? Who sent you boss in heaven, Mr. Gleek? <laughs> Adrian! Jiminy! I'm alive! Oh, we were all so concerned, we thought we'd lost you, I'm ladies and gentlemen. Jiminy Gleek! <laughs> oh my god, Adrian! Atheism is the pet! 
I'm marching right down to the Kingdom Hall and becoming a Jehovah's Witness. I can touch, I can see, I can smell things. I, I'm alive, I'm gonna stand on my head. <laughs> Jiminy Talks with Rob Schneider when we return. On the next home movie, Liza and the Glicks remember Bob Fosse. Bob, why'd you have to smoke so many cigarettes? Will I dance again like I used to? No, honey, ask him a question that's realistic that he'll answer yes or no. I heard a yes. Did anybody yes, else? Yes, I heard it. it. <laughs> an absolute crapshoot for us, which is fine for me because I, I love living on the edge. Mr. Roy Scheider, here goes nothing. <laughs> He's helping me like a dog, this boy. Oh my goodness. Oh, they love you. That's nice. Oh, isn't that wonderful how much they respond to you? It's almost like they remember you. <laughs> it's, it's something that they notice. I don't know. But you're, and you're a tiny little thing. You're what? You're just, it's like I thought, oh, you walked around and I said, my God, Billy Barty's back. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is so, and you were on this show, SNL. In the early Saturday Night Live. In the early 90s. And at the Boys Club. People call Saturday Night Live a Boys Club. How does Rob Schneider fit into this concept? I always felt, uh, you know, you know, no one was stopping the women from writing funny stuff, so if they would do it, you know, I was... So women aren't funny? I didn't say women aren't funny. <laughs> you inferred that if they had been able to write something funny, then they would have been happy. But they didn't, and therefore they proceeded as a boys club. That's what I got from you, my diminutive little friend. Uh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I, I simply said that no one was preventing them from writing something funny, it, and... Uh, <laughs> not gonna let you off. I'm gonna be very tough on this, because this is what I do. I'm more journalist than entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying to me... That the ladies didn't write. And they bitterly called it a boys club, but you're saying if they had written it, then it could have been an everyone's club. <laughs> Is that what you said, Rob? Yes. Oh, my God. I, what archery. Oh, I hope I'm on CNN with this groundbreak. Do you know what it just dawned on me? No one cares about your opinion. Shoot! <laughs> well, I, I, I think that um, there's a, some chauvinistic quality to, to, to men. I think if they try to deny that, I think you try to overcome that when you love somebody. And it's Rob Schneider in love. Y yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious, we got another scoop. Do we know his name? <laughs> and you work with Callista Flockert. No. Oh, yes, I did an episode of... See, uh, what happens there? You have a synapse. Yes. You forget things. And yeah. this is how it starts. And then it cuts to about five years from now, you're butt naked walking down the 405. <laughs> Jiminy. Drooling with no upper know. teeth or lower teeth. Hey, look, teeth. come on. Well, that's, that's just a little bit. I, just, well, I, mean, I did one episode of uh, the first show. What's it called? What was the episode called? What's it called, the show that you can't remember? <laughs> um, the, uh, Ali, oh, boy. Ali McBeal. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. You do impersonations. Yes. But let's hear some of the characters that dwell within you, rent-free. My, the voices, I don't think I have on movies very interesting voices anymore. You know, there's a lot of those character actors are gone, like Peter Lorre. Can we hear some of Peter Lorre? Um, he had that wonderful delivery that he had, which just, uh, was fascinating to hear. Everything sounded interesting that he was saying. I like it. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's good! Well, there's not much call for it. How about there's no call for it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were a shoe salesman. Yes. What size feet do you think I have? Uh, seven and a half. That's a... You know what? You are absolutely scaring the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> do you think there's any relationship between the size of someone's foot and the size of someone's ding-dong? <laughs> 
you say, little toes? What's your theory? <laughs> there are exceptions. <laughs> oh, this is a daring boy. This is a boy who's not afraid to make statements. And because he's a superstar, and he's a movie star. This is Roy Scheider, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Coming up, Jiminy Talks with Tim Robbins. And now it's time for Lollawood Fables. On today's fable, we have a wonderful tale. Uh, oh, oops. <laughs> what am I thinking as if I can see anything without the goggles? Anyways. The title of today's fable is entitled Mike Ovitz and the Gay Mafia. Once upon a time, there was a very powerful man in Hollywood named Mike Ovitz. Then he made the tragic mistake of locking horns with a group of dudes that was even more powerful -er than he was. No! You listen to me, punk! I'm Mike Ovitz, and I run this town, and there's no way you're gonna cast Harvey Firestein as Bobby Kennedy in his movie. And if it's war you fruit flies want, oh, damn it, it's war you're gonna get! Mike? Michael? That arrogant schmuck just hung up on me. You know what this means, don't you? We go to the mattresses. Hey, Scott, I like to party as much as the next fella, but shouldn't we deal with Ovitz first? In this instance, Seamus, going to the mattresses means going to war. Oh. I worry about Mike Ovitz, though. He's one tough cookie. And he carries all those fabulous Hollywood stars around in his pocket like so many nickels and dimes. Well, I think it's time we paid our dear Mr. Ovitz a visit. And no mail this time! Huh? Okay, goons, whack him. Um, Scott, just to clarify, when you say whack him, you don't mean... Um... What is this, Rupert Everett's right of spring party? Whack him! Beat him up! Get him! Take that! You're not so tough, are we now, this. mister? Oh, Where are my like foot soldiers oh, when I need that. them? The kicking I can handle. It's the Calvin Klein obsession that's killing me! I swear I only use two splashes. Yeah, in your dreams, Dockyard Dora. Be butch guy. Oh, my God. Oh, get, get, get him there! Out of my balls, you gay bastard! And ultimately, poor Mike Ovitz was driven from show business. His entire career ruined. I've read a lot of fables to you, little tykes. Uh, but that one, that particular one, is to me one of the saddest fables that we've ever done. Oh, Mikey, why have they forsaken ye? Uh, uh, I can't go on. I can't. Jason, wrap up, won't you? Just, just go to commercial or something. I, I, I can't bother. It's not on my contract. Oh, for God's sake. Ouchie! Oh, hold on, I gotta take this. Hi, Mike. It's me. Someone is trying to jeopardize my sense of self. Put him on. Here, Mike wants to talk to you. Hello? No, Mr. Ovitz. I love my kneecaps. <laughs> That's La La Wolf Fables for today. We'll see you next time. Change your tune, didn't you, Jason? You little dwarf. <laughs> about with Jiminy Glick. I'm sitting here with an absolute superstar, a wonderful spirit, and a man who brings charisma to everything he touches. And his name is Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins, how are you? I'm very well, Jiminy. Look how handsome you look. Thank you. In a Thank blue you. suit. I had so many notes prepared, and I, re I was at such a disadvantage because I, I was sent a photograph of you. And I, and I realized that at, I was just assuming that you were Robert Wall from Arliss. Oh. You must get that all the time. Yeah, yeah. You do. Wherever I go. And yet you're a joyful, you've got a, a spirited Irish face to you, boy. Thank you. Are you Irish? I am part Irish, yes. Part Irish? Yes. Isn't that fun? The part that drinks, yes. The part that drinks! Yes. Oh, that's It's good. not that funny. No, but I fake things. I fake emotions. <laughs> 
I don't really, I mean, I'm pretending to be interested in you. It's all trying to feed your ego, because you're in show business. This is what, you were born in West Covina, California. Yes, didn't you start your career there in West Covina? That was a busboy yeah. at this Greek restaurant, which, that would serve baklava with sponge sugar. See, now, I'm always nice to busboys. I used to work as a busboy. You didn't? Yes. Tell me that story, at, at Tim. At the Bel Air Sands Hotel, it used to be called that. Good. I'm so glad I popped. That's a killer story. If you ever do another talk show, be sure to tell that one and just end it like that. <laughs> Your mother was Gil Robbins, and she was in Peter, Paul, and Mary. No. Tell me about... No, no, no. My what? mom was not named Gil. My mom was named Mary. Mary. Gil, my father, was in a group called the High Women. The High Women? Yes. What did they sing? Michael Rowe, Your Boat Ashore. Oh, no! Field. Oh, my goodness. This is wonderful news. This is exciting. Exciting news. I lost my virginity to that song. No kidding. Yes. That's amazing. It's true. Was it really it in a car? No, I was riding a bicycle. <laughs> and, I, and I fell on, on the boy bar and I don't I, I don't, I don't know. want to tell them. That's not really so, losing your virginity. It was. I don't I can't I don't want to go into I, it. <laughs> I can't get my head around that. Well, uh, You're driving a bike, you fall into the boy bar, Yes, that's losing your virginity. Well, yes, because <laughs> this, the part of the boy, there was an opening. Oh, look, I can't go into this. I can't. It happened. Accept it. All right. Let's talk about some of the wonderful films that Tim Robbins has given America and parts of Europe. Quarterback Princess. Mm. I loved it. Yeah, I knew you'd seen that film. I didn't see it. Who was in it with you? Uh, Helen Hunt. Helen Hunt. She was the quarterback princess. A lesbian quarterback she played. No, she wasn't a lesbian. She just liked the game and she wanted to play. Oh, that's... Just because women play sports doesn't mean they're lesbians. I think... I don't know if that's true, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've often found that women, especially if you look at uh, volleyball women, mm. there's no way they're dating guys. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. Uh, okay. And, and they're filled with testosterone. Yeah. I'm not one of those, I don't judge or point my finger at people, but I think women in sports are lesbians. Mm. Any thoughts? What do you it's think? It's an interesting though? theory. Does it turn you on to, 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 uh, to watch women in <laughs> yes, sports? Oh, ah. my goodness. So you, yeah. I love seeing yeah. those women swerking up a sweat and, and yeah grunting some, oh grunting when yes. they hit the ball mm. well mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah yeah sounds like something doesn't it it uh, does sound like something but that's that's usually after bran has been taken orally hunks <laughs> of bran you'll make that sound you've never heard that from a woman that kind of uh, uh, thing no i've heard <laughs> that's what i've heard yeah. that's what i hear from my wonderful wife dixie yeah does Tim Robbins sit back and each morning and look in the mirror and say, what can I, who can I suck up to today? Oh, yeah, I'm always, you know, I wake up in the morning, I make phone calls to people that don't know me, and I, I just try to ingratiate myself in some way and get my name on their list. You don't trust your talent? No. Smart. Now, let's get back to the real thing. I just loved you in, and it's just, <laughs> no, but I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I just, Ow. I just want to say Ow. this to you. You. We're in Bull Durham. Tell him. Tell him I'm... Tell him about Bull Durham. That was a wonderful role. You were so much fun. And Kevin Costner. You just call him Kevin, I bet. Yeah, or, or you know, buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy. That'd be, oh, that's, that's a Hollywood thing. Yeah, hey, buddy. You know, hey, buddy. Oh, let me try that. Know. I'm going to try this. Let's say you yeah. and I run into each other. Okay. Jiminy. Oh, hey, buddy. That's very good. That's very good. <laughs> oh, you're in, try man. That. You're in. I'm going to try that. Yeah. This has been so much fun talking to you, Tim Robbins. And I remember thinking, how would I end an interview with you? I was thinking about 10 seconds in. Because uh -huh. <laughs> I was yeah. thinking, oh, my God, it's going to be the longest. Yeah, it's but funny I had the same fun. thought. And I, I, I don't offer this to many, but I... I, every night I go to a wonderful, wonderful steam bath where I have a personal reflection and I, I think about past defeats and, mm -hmm. and future traumas. Mm -hmm. And I'd love you to join me tonight. That's not far from here. Do you think you would? Yeah, sure. You got to be naked? Yes, of course, dear. It's oh, a okay. steam bath. All right. Shall we sing as we leave? Sure. Shine on, shine on, harvest moon up in the sky.
Primetime Glick. We'll be back after this. Rob Schneider, three cheers for you. Thank you so much for dropping by. Aren't you a sweet miniature version of a normal person? <laughs> hey, Schneider. You know, if you're looking for new management, maybe I can be of service. But not tonight. Tonight, you'll be servicing me. Hmm, I think I'm getting a woody. You know what? I think we should maybe leave. Suit yourself. I'm in a Bob Crane kind of mood. Bed me! Bed me, you wooden bastard! Show me the wrinkles. Oh, oh. That's good. Oh, I smell shellac. Spank my bottom boy. Oh, Spank! Yeah, Move your hand over. Move it to where you should. <laughs> oh, let me see what you're looking at. Oh. I'll, I'll back out. I'll yeah, back out. I'll back out. Back way out. That's, 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 that's close in there. That's not far enough. Mm. Try Anaheim. 